Welcome back to my channel if you are new here. Hello, my name is Ailish. It's lovely to meet you and I hope that you do something today that makes you smile. In today's video, I am going to take you through my fat loss slash physique journey that I have been on this year. In January, I decided to lose some weight, lose some fat. I wanted to be honestly just a little bit more lean. So I did a six month fat loss journey from January to August. Um, where I lost six kilograms and then since August I have been maintaining my results. I just wanted to jump in here before the video starts and ask very kindly and politely if you wouldn't mind leaving a like or a comment or subscribing if you haven't already. It really really helps me out and it's hugely appreciated. So I am just going to share some images on the screen now to kind of paint a picture with the story, my befores, durings and afters. So these images are from beforehand. These are at the start of my journey. So I was honestly happy with how my body looked. Like there was nothing wrong with how my body looked before, nothing wrong with how it looks now. I just wanted to have less fat. I just wanted to be leaner. So um, as you can see, I've got a little bit of body fat that is visible in those photos. Then at the end of of my journey i'm sharing a photo here where you can see month one month three month six so that was january and then i think april and then august and you can see that i have pretty much maintained my body shape just overall lost fat in my weight loss um, i've got another comparison picture here which is where you can see a lot of fat from the midsection but also from my legs um, and a little bit from my arms you can't cherry pick unfortunately where your fat comes off um, overall i did get leaner head to toe and actually i noticed it on my back first out of everything and then these last couple of images are where i'm currently at now so three months after my fat loss journey ended just currently maintaining my results i actually filmed a series here on youtube taking you through like the first few months of my fat loss journey so if you would like to watch that in a little bit more depth what i was eating how i was exercising what i was doing go and give that a watch otherwise i'm just gonna outline absolutely everything i did and separate it in two different sections here now so let's go I'm just going to share my screen so that you can see what I'm talking about here but discussing my step count because this is a really really big important part of the journey um my steps were on average kind of low in the lead up to my fat loss journey so in the November before it was 3,400 then 7,100 in December 8,700 in January 8,300 on average in February so like definitely not in a well I mean <laughs> in um november it was but like kind of sitting around like the eight thousand mark which is definitely not a bad place to be like i was active but to increase my daily energy expenditure i needed to be more active and be on my feet more so walk more um, so you can see here through the peak of my fat loss journey like it went almost up to twelve thousand steps a day so that was 4,000 more than I was doing, 4,000 every single day, which roughly equates to an extra 30 minute walk. That's essentially what I was doing on top of my normal routine. It was an extra 30 minute walk every day. And over the course of a month, that is literally like 120,000 extra steps. Now, if I asked you now to go out and do um, 120,000 steps, do you know how long that would take? That would probably take you like all day. You probably couldn't continue walking for 120,000 steps. That is kilometers. That is such a long distance. So this is why step counts are so important in fat loss journeys because it's a free, easy and simple way to get your daily energy expenditure up, which puts you in an energy deficit. Then towards the end of my fat loss journey, it stayed around the 10,000 mark. So again, my deficit was just due to, um, part of it was due to my energy expenditure going up through the extra steps. And then through maintenance, it kind of got a little bit low. It went back down to around the 9,000. So it's back up to around 11,000 now. Um, but I'm trying, trying to aim to keep it around 10,000, which is something that I like to do because I do miss when I don't go on my walks. Like that wasn't a habit beforehand. It's a habit I've built and it's kind of falling apart at the moment. But I always feel, you always feel better when you go for a walk. So anyways, please do not ever underestimate steps because they play such a big part. Like I can't stress that enough. The extra 4,000 a day 
over the course of a month, over the course of three months, you know, it adds up. Factor number two was my overall average activity level. So beforehand, I was doing around one to two gym sessions on and off per week. Like my motivation was at an all time low. And um, I've been going to the gym, I've been working out for like 10 years now. Um, it's not like I didn't know what to do. It's not like I don't know a million ways to exercise. It's not like I haven't tried everything. I just didn't have any direction. I was feeling really unmotivated and I was just like not excited about the gym. And on top of that, I was actually going to a gym that I hated so much. The gym was horrible. The equipment was so dirty and, and I, ugh, I didn't like the layout. The layout made us feel really exposed. So for all of these reasons, I was incredibly inconsistent with the gym beforehand. Then during my fat loss phase, so during February to August, I was on average training three full body sessions per week and I very rarely missed those three full body training sessions. They, they were all strength training. I was getting stronger throughout. It was like the last one or two months that my strength was starting to falter, which it should if you're in a deficit because you are not fueling your body adequately, you're in a deficit. I was doing those 10 to 12,000 steps, which I just discussed beforehand. And I was doing one extra cardio activity. So whether it was like a hot yoga or a spin class or a hike on the weekend or paddle, um, yeah, I was being active around four days of the week and I was walking consistently 10 to 12,000 steps on average per day. Now I am still doing those three full body sessions. My current goals are getting stronger. I'm trying to get a pull up. Um, but yeah, so I'm still doing three full body sessions, still working on strength. On average, I'm doing one to two extra sessions a week. So again, like yoga or spinning or netball or a hike again, just like still really quite the same level of activity, but just a few, a few less steps. So yeah, I find that the like base of three full body sessions is really, really manageable. Like I know that I can get that done pretty much every week. I can do three workouts a week, I think forever. That works for me. I think that's the minimum I can consistently do. And I think that was definitely important in me finding the right level to build on um, during the diet so that I wouldn't kind of feel overwhelmed at the end of the diet. The third section that we are going to discuss is a diet. This is a really, really big, important part, especially, especially, especially when it comes to not only your overall health, but if you are trying to lose weight, if you are trying to get lean, you need to be in an energy deficit if you want to see some big results. Like you can lose fat and build muscle at the same time and eating around maintenance. It's a long, slow process and it's a great process, honestly. But I know that most people want to see results a bit faster faster than that so being in a deficit is quite important a few months in a deficit leads to sustainable results long term if you do it in a way that works for you so i've got some notes um beforehand i was relying heavily on takeaways um jake and i were just both really stressed at work neither of us had the energy to really put any effort into meal prep anymore and like the love for food was gone and considering we both love to cook and I literally studied food science and nutrition at university and food is my life like food was just bringing us down and I couldn't be bothered and takeaways are really easy to obtain in Dubai so that's what we were kind of living off and another thing was that I was getting kind of greedy with ordering food so usually Jake and I would get like maybe two mains and we'd share one side and that's honestly fine and I really enjoyed that like you get in a variety because we'd share the two main meals in the side um but it was kind of turning into like three main meals and then two or three sides just adding more and more and more and then the last thing is that I left things to chance like no prep was just leaving things last minute and ended up eating a lot of convenience and processed foods so that's where my diet was beforehand and so for my diet from February until August I tracked my diet intake I made sure I was in a calorie deficit my calorie deficit started off as only a few hundred calories and then at the absolute maximum it was um, around a 500 calorie deficit at the absolute maximum my priority in my diet the entire time was getting at least my five a day 
having a great varied balance of carbs, fats and proteins, making sure that the very big bulk of my diet was nutritionally dense foods and then not um, restricting takeaways, processed foods, anything like that, which is a mistake that I think is easy to make when you don't have a lot of experience in diet and um, tracking calories. I know that this is a reason that a lot of people can develop a bad relationship with tracking because it's more than just the numbers. Like to be in a calorie deficit, you have to be eating less than your body is burning and tracking your calories makes that very easy. However, if your diet isn't balanced and you're mentally not in a good place with your diet, it's just gonna turn into a really unpleasant experience. So I strongly recommend it if you are prioritizing your hunger and fullness cues and you have a really well balanced diet as it's only for a few months i did it for about 50 percent of the time so about three months in total this year maximum i will be i will have spent tracking and then around three months into the diet we started getting meal prep delivered because we were meal prepping on sundays and i work on sundays so sunday morning was meal prep and then work on sunday night and then jake usually had some work on saturdays so it meant that we didn't really have have much time together as a couple so we thought this is a worthwhile investment because we want to spend more time together because we both work really long hours Monday through Friday and then I work on Sunday afternoons as well and um, so that was a really really big help honestly and um, the meal prep delivered lunches and dinners so we just had to make our breakfast and then food on the weekends and now in the maintenance phase I haven't tracked at all and um, my priority here what I've wrote is that I've been mindful to ensure that my meals are high protein and um, most meals are being prepped and planned so that they are balanced like I mentioned earlier like carbs, fats, proteins, big variety, five a day. I eat completely balanced um, and roughly have maybe like one or two takeaways a week. Um, I have been to the UK, Milan and Berlin since August. Um, and my diet hadn't changed pre or post holidays. Um, I just ate what I wanted, listened to hunger and fullness cues and my weight has remained the exact same. So those are the three important factors. Um, your overall step count because this has a huge role in your overall energy expenditure which is really important for being in a deficit number two your physical activity level which is all of the exercise you do and including a little bit obviously the steps too and then the third thing is diet so those are the three main factors honorable mentions rest sleep and recovery very important too if you aren't recovering or you're not giving yourself enough time to recover your body isn't recovered so you're not going to make progress so please look after your recovery too i've got some notes here that have just sparked a last important stage and that is um sustainability so if i stopped exercising and walking all together i would start gaining weight because my energy expenditure would go down if i still ate the same diet and i just stopped going to the gym and i stopped exercising i would gain weight i'd be in an energy um surplus and this is why drastic six to 12 week diets tend to fail long term. Um, you'll obviously, obviously you will lose a shit ton of weight if you're exercising seven days a week and you're walking 15,000 steps a day and you're eating 1,000 calories a day, like for sure, you are gonna get shredded. You're gonna lose your period. Your hair's gonna start falling out, but babe, you're gonna have abs in 12 weeks. And I mean, wow, amazing. After that, you're probably going to resent exercising. You're probably going to realize that seven workouts a week is not realistic long term in the slightest. This is what leads to yo-yo dieting. You make all this crazy grand progress because you've made crazy, crazy drastic changes. And then when you realize that life is not worth living in these changes, you just go back to normal or worse to make up for what you've lost. And then the cycle begins again. So I wanted to make this video to show that it is possible to diet healthily and sustainably and achieve really sustainable, great results long-term um, in a way that honestly improves your life, makes you happier, makes you proud of your achievements. And it's a positive experience. At The Wellness Club, we help you find a way of moving that you genuinely enjoy and want to continue so that your results last forever. If you're struggling to see results, enjoy training or are struggling with your diet, click the link in my bio to apply for one-to-one -one online coaching at The Wellness Club or drop me a DM on Instagram because I would love to chat. I hope you enjoyed this video and took something away from it. Thank you so much for watching. It's really appreciated. I'll see you in my next video. Bye!